Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We're back on the Grunge channel. All right, we got the tragedy of a deadliest catch has only gotten worse. I never really f sat down and fully watched like an episode. Uh, I just know that it's pretty crazy. Me and water don't do well as a person who can't swim. These brothers, boy, they, man, I know that show's crazy though, but hey, I'll leave the link to their channel in the description. Shout out to all the good humans. We ain't gonna waste no more time. Let's jump right into it. No one on Deadliest Catch has an easy life, but some of its cast have certainly faced more than their fair share of challenges. These are some of the saddest details surrounding the fishermen who risk it on the Bering Sea. In the summer of 2020, Malin Reyes, a deckhand and regular aboard both the Seabrook and the Cape Caution, passed away suddenly and unexpectedly. Oh. Reyes was home when he had a major heart attack and was immediately taken to the hospital in his hometown in Whitefish, Montana. See, dang, man, you know, like this, you know, when you do like a, a very, very dangerous job and like, Nothing happens to you while you're on the job. But then, you know, while you're just at home enjoying life, things like this, that's, oh, man. Because, you know, you would think, like, if anything would to, was to happen, it would happen at work. Damn. Reyes was transferred to life support, but a day later, his family made the decision to remove him from it. He was 38. Their Facebook 38. memorial and tribute read in part, On Sunday night, our family together made the hardest choice we've ever made, and that was to remove him from life support. Malin's body was tired and had put up an amazing fight. He was the strongest guy we knew. He was surrounded by so much love. Reyes's deadliest catch family posted tributes as well, and Reyes's wife shared that the support and reminiscence from friends and family was extremely helpful. She told USA Today, I am in awe of the people that he touched just by his positive attitude and smile. Plans were made to spread his ashes over the Bering Sea and in the Swan Range Mountains of Montana. In late December 2020, tragedy once again struck the crew of Deadliest Catch. It was reported that on December 27th, Nick McLaughlin died in Nashville, Tennessee at the young age of 33. Nick McLaughlin just passed away. Did Nick pass? Is that true? That's uh, a huge loss for Wild Bill. McLaughlin worked on the Summer Bay fishing vessel and was a mainstay of the Discovery reality series from 2013 to 2020. According to an autopsy report obtained by The Sun, McLaughlin's official cause of death was a drug overdose. Oh. A combination of cocaine, methamphetamine, and fentanyl was found oh. in his system, and the coroner noted that he had a history of drug use. During the 13th season of the show, McLaughlin was briefly kicked off the boat after drug and alcohol misuse. Dang, McLaughlin man. opened up... I just, it's just, man, when you, you know, work all your life to get to a certain position, you know, I know addiction is just, it's really, really bad, but, oh, man, a lot of people be suffering in silence. Up about his struggles with alcohol, heroin, and methamphetamine in an article for Chosen Magazine, stating, My life went from Bering Sea badass to full-blown junkie very rapidly. Hidden from me was that passion I had for life. After seeking treatment at a rehabilitation facility in September 2016, McLaughlin embraced sobriety and returned to life on deck, where his wit and skill buoyed the crew. According to Captain Bill Wachowski, McLaughlin was, quote, the epitome of a true crabber. In a statement released to Variety, a Discovery spokesperson said, Nick came from a long line of crabbers and was known for his great depth of knowledge. He also had a sharp sense of humor, even in the most difficult conditions. Dang. He will be deeply missed by all those who knew him. It wasn't until more than a year after crew member Todd Kachutin's death that Discovery UK shared more footage of the circumstances surrounding the fatal accident. In season 17, the captains of Deadliest Catch talked about a crew member on the Patricia Lee who was in desperate need of medical attention. Eventually, Sig Hansen shared the terrifying circumstances that necessitated the call. Kachutin had been hit by a sliding crab pot, which weighed in at somewhere around 800 pounds. 
Kachutin later died on board the ship as a result of his injuries. Dang. According to his obituary, he was lauded for his sense of humor, his friendly and outgoing personality, and the dangerous Bering Sea was described as always being a special place to him. He was survived by both his parents, his sister, and his brother. Unsurprisingly, his death was taken hard by the crew, who described his untimely passing as the tragic loss of yet another friend. The ocean is breathtaking in beauty, that, but man. as the cast of Deadliest Catch know all too well, it's also incredibly unpredictable and wildly dangerous. Still, sometimes no amount of care and caution can prevent life-threatening accidents, like the one that happened to Francis Katungan on board the Patricia Lee. In an episode that aired on April 26, 2022, the ship was hit by a rogue wave. The blow to the ship loosened a crab pot, and Katungan was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I recovered and looked over, and he was pinned in between upright pots and the anchor. The accident was so bad that even the show's producer rushed in to help. Katungan was moved inside, and Captain Rip Carlton quickly came to the conclusion that he had probably broken his hip and pelvis. Uh. Carlton radioed for help, and in the following 16 hours of traveling to meet up with the U.S. Coast Guard, the waters and the weather only got worse. Katungan was lifted onto a helicopter in the middle of an Arctic storm, another reminder of just how dangerous the job can turn in a split second. Captain Rip Carlton and the crew of the Patricia Lee have dealt with a string of tragedies, and Katungan's accident and Kachutin's death were far from the end of them. After Katungan was taken off the boat in the middle of an Arctic storm, the Patricia Lee was delayed in going back out onto the water. After adding another deckhand named Devin Davis, they headed back out. Once everyone was on board, the captain took a moment to highlight the importance of safety to his crew. Devin, it's your first time on the boat. Don't get hurt. Sadly, the trip quickly turned into a nightmare when Davis collapsed in an accident that was not recorded. Another crew member radioed the captain in a panic, saying that Davis had taken a blow to the head, knocking him unconscious and causing him to spit blood. Dang. Exactly what had happened was immediately unclear, and the episode wrapped with Carlton saying he had no idea what was going to happen. The following episode showed that Davis regained consciousness Though yet another crew member sustained an ankle injury shortly thereafter, leaving uh, the crew even more shorthanded. Luckily, by the end of the episode, Davis. Dang, dude, this. Hey, like I knew this show was very dangerous, but man, you know, not only are you dealing with the crazy weather, but just all of that stuff on board. Like, man. Like, what are they, uh, I need to watch this show because I'm like, once they get everything, I just want to know what's the next step. How much they get paid to do this, just all that, man. Is the risk worth the reward? ...was back on his feet and working the deck with his crewmates, though Carlton made it clear there was little time for celebration, given how behind schedule they were. Never thought it'd feel good to be sword and fish heads again. A veteran of Deadliest Catch, Nick Mavar was featured on the show from its first season in 2005 all the way through to season 17. During his time on Deadliest Catch, Mavar worked as a deckhand on the fishing boat FV Northwestern and was no stranger to the dangers of his profession. In one 2011 episode with a storm raging, Mavar's nose was broken by a hook that swung into his face. Another more serious incident in late 2020 caused his departure from the show when his appendix burst aboard the Northwestern. As if that was not serious enough, a cancerous tumor was also discovered while Mavar was being treated for the burst appendix. Damn. While Mavar recovered and was successfully treated for both medical issues, he would later sue the owners of the Northwestern for inadequate medical contingencies. Sadly, despite these and the many other trials Mavar faced in his notoriously dangerous career of commercial sea fishing, it was on land in a boatyard where Mavar had a heart attack and died in June 2024. <sighs> His nephew and castmate, Jake Anderson, spoke to Mavar's dedication to their craft with the New York Times, calling up. his uncle a fisherman through and through. Captained just... by Jake Anderson since 2015, the FV Saga was a regular feature on Deadliest Catch. In 2020, viewers got to watch Ross Jones, a young deckhand seeking to make a name for himself, work among the vessel's fearless crew for two episodes. Like, look at that. This is all new for me. First open season. While the Greenhorn was only a crew member on the saga for a relatively short while, later moving on to at least two other ships as a deckhand, he reportedly left his mark as an affable character. Sadly, 
Jones passed away oh, no. in June 2022. Details are sparse on the cause of Jones's untimely death, with the popular Facebook fan page for Deadliest Catch citing respect and privacy for the fisherman's partner and young son, who had turned two years old shortly before Jones' passing. The announcement was received with an outpouring of grief and condolences, and Captain Jake Anderson contributed with a post on Instagram, alluding to Jones's sense of humor and commemorating his hard work. In August 2023, the longtime star of Deadliest Catch, Captain Jake Anderson, found himself without the most essential tool for open sea fishing, the boat. a boat. After 18 years of working his way to the top of his profession and facing his fair share of adversity in the process, Anderson's future was upended with a locked chain and a repossession note hanging from his fishing vessel, the FV Saga. To at least partially understand why Anderson ended up in this predicament, we need to wind the clock back a couple of years. In 2021, due to declining crab populations, the Red King crab season in Alaska was canceled, and the same occurred in 2022. Naturally, this placed fishermen under considerable financial strain, and the reopening of the king crab fisheries in 2023 was expected to see fewer boats as a result. Anderson had also hinted that his reliance on his business partner to handle the finances may have compounded the problem, saying Man. in an interview with TV Insider, Just before I was going to go red crab fishing, I found out my partner, with all due respect with the legal things going on, we don't know what he did, I lost my boat. Fortunately, Anderson had a helping hand from his former mentor and co-star, Captain Sig Hansen. Hansen offered him a place on his own boat, the FV Northwestern. The two may have had a fraught working relationship in the past, but Anderson said that this time things would be different, explaining, Without my boat, I'm not a threat to him anymore. I can only be an asset. Of all the boats featured on Discovery Channel's Deadliest Catch, the Cornelius um, I gotta, yeah, I gotta find out what channel this comes on. Um, I want to know how long they be out there. Um, how many seasons it is? Cause this, this is pretty crazy, man. All the stuff you have to deal with, and then of course, just regular life. Elia Marie is one of the most beloved for having been the site of much sweat, blood, and toil since the earliest seasons of the show. Captained by Phil Harris from 2005 until his tragic death in 2010, the Cornelia Marie's helm was passed to his sons, Jake and Josh Harris, until Josh partnered with Casey McManus to purchase the boat. However, years later, the partnership was on course for an unexpected and shocking turn of events, which would end both McManus and Josh's tenure on Deadliest Catch as well as the rugged Cornelia Marie's. According to facts, in September 2022, reports emerged of a second. Within a few weeks, it was announced that Josh had been dropped from Deadliest Catch, and he was not the only one. I think I remember this. I think I did another video on, I forgot what it was, but I think I remember that. One to experience the fallout. McManus was also axed, along with the Cornelia Marie. McManus moved on to operating tugboats and was philosophical about his exit from Deadliest Catch, writing on X, formerly known as Twitter, Discovery did not renew contracts with the boat, nor Josh, nor I. It was a bummer deal, but there's no crab to catch anyways. Even so, a scandal like this was surely not on the career fisherman's bingo card. In 2017, it was reported that Sig Hansen was being sued by his estranged daughter, Melissa Ekstrom, after she claimed the Seattle Times, Hansen and his daughter's mother, Lisa Ekstrom, divorced in 1992. At the time, the accusations had also surfaced, but the judge in the case found that the abuse charges were un So, again, sometimes they say stuff on here and I can't have it repeated. They can say it, I can't react to it. it it's, I don't understand it, never will. But that's why I'm saying I'm leaving the link to the video so you guys can... Because it's a couple of things I might have to chop out. Unfounded, and that Hansen was innocent. Fast forward to 2017, and Ekstrom's attorneys were bringing the case to court again, based on the fact that she hadn't been able to testify the first time. Meanwhile, Hansen made it clear what he thought of the whole thing, saying, This is nothing more than an old-fashioned shakedown. It's a completely frivolous lawsuit full of lies that my ex-wife made up to take away my daughter and still uses to try to extort money from me. It's blackmail. 
The following year, the Washington State Court of Appeals ruled that a civil trial could move forward. No further details on the progression of a civil trial have been made public, and Hansen continues to deny the charges. Again, man, shout out to them for doing that dangerous job. Uh, I couldn't imagine, like, even when I go to the beach, I don't even go far out. I don't swim at the beach, um, just do some boogie board. I just can't imagine being on one of those things, how rocky it is, all that, man. Um but yeah, that is crazy, man. Like I said, when you do a dangerous job, like you ever hear, you know, like when police officers like or firefighters or just any of those people, when they don't die on the job, when it's like a car accident or just, just, you know, it's like you come, you, you work a hard shift almost lose your life at work and then they they die on the way home just driving trying to get back home getting hit by like a drunk driver it's crazy crazy but hey appreciate you guys coming over and watching man like share comment and, and subscribe peace out